All right, so today we're doing the story of indeterminate forms. And the story starts a long, long time ago, maybe a couple thousand years ago. And it starts with, uh, well, simply just counting numbers. Suppose we go on back to the very, very beginning when humans first learned, they first learned how to count natural numbers. By natural numbers, we mean specific kind of a bunch of the numbers. They, they look like this. They look like uh, 1, that would be a natural number, 2 would be a natural number, 3 would be a natural number, and so on and so forth. Uh, there's even a famous symbol for them. If you take these all and collect them into one bunch, we would call this a set of natural numbers, and we use this fancy letter N. Uh, fancy because it's got the double side here on the edge. Uh, that would be called a set of natural numbers. Okay, that's what we learned at the beginning. Everything was good. Uh, by everything, I mean the following. Uh, the following was good. I mean that um, we could add in the in the world of natural numbers. Adding was not that hard. You could take uh, one dog here, for example, and um, what could you do with a dog? You could say, "Oh, I've got two dogs." Wait a minute. I've got one more dog, and you could say, "Well, how much is it?" If I add one dog um, plus two dogs, and you could say, well, of course, that's going to be um, three dogs, and life would be good, right? Adding was not that hard. Um, even subtracting, you could subtract easily. Um, subtracting is easy as just saying two dogs, you take away one, and whatnot. Uh, so people started looking at these numbers and it wasn't a big deal. Uh, you could even take um, a dog here um, and then you could even take maybe a half a dog and it wouldn't be a problem. People even learned to do half dogs and so you could say well maybe this is equal to uh, how many dogs would that be? Maybe one and a half or maybe three halves dogs and even those numbers they weren't that nat natural at the beginning, but people began to learn them, and so maybe these would be called rational numbers. Um, and it wasn't a big deal, but then guess what happened? This crazy little number zero was invented. All the dogs were gone, and now zero had to be dealt with. And then start things started to get interesting, because now, uh, at first, although it seemed harmless, it started to get uh, a little bit tricky. Some of the arithmetic was easy. For example, you could easily do um, what, what kind of what do I mean when we, when we say arithmetic? By that I mean you could easily do things like this. You could easily do three plus a zero. It wasn't that hard. It was, you, okay, that's got to be three. You could easily do some other types of arithmetic. Five times a zero. You could say, well, that's probably zero, and it wasn't even that big of a deal. Uh, arithmetic was pretty easy, pretty harmless at first. But then, guess what happened? This number starts to get a little bit tricky when you do things like this. What if I take 3 and then I divide by 0? They say, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Strange things are happening here. You know, back then, you know, some people learned that this was a bad thing to do. And if you were caught, you know, your teacher would always say, don't don't divide by zero and uh, even the Catholic Church would get involved if if you were caught dividing by zero this is what would happen to you you would be ha hanged of course goodbye uh, for dividing by zero it was a big big problematic thing and and then or even things like this a zero uh, raised to the zero first they would tell you well zero to the anything anything would be equal to zero but anything to the zero would be equal to one and then you have something like this where both of these statements seem to be conflicting and so it brought in a lot of uh, trouble this innocent looking number zero as soon as you introduced it everything changed it was as if one way to look at it it was as if before before you know this is the playground where people played these were all the numbers that people had, just the natural numbers. One, two, three, four, five. All these numbers were so harmless and nice. Everything was good. Um, good to go and there was no trouble in the world. And then that container got bigger. Like they added that number zero and all of a sudden 
uh, well, I skipped two, uh, all of a sudden this became uh, troubling. Um, a lot of things were unanswered and so one way to think about it is these numbers are easy, these numbers are for little kids. You start introducing things like zero and it's no longer a little kid game, it's, a, it's more of a grown up game. That, that's what happened. Not, not only that, but zero introduced even more problems uh, than the ones I just mentioned. Uh, for example, uh, when, when you take something like 3 and you say, well, if I divide by, by something 0, maybe I have this notion that that's really, really small. And when I do that, the quotient becomes really, really big. Big, 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 super big. What that does is introduce this notion of, of big, big, big numbers. And so this uh, famous symbol infinity was invented just to make things even more interesting. So things were getting complicated by the century here. Every time a new number was invented, it, it, it caused a lot of trouble for people uh, because they couldn't do uh, regular arithmetic or the arithmetic they were used to. Uh, suddenly they couldn't divide by certain numbers. Certainly they were getting strange things like huge, huge numbers. And everything was going um, into chaos here. Okay, infinity, even infinity. At first you might think, well, it's harmless. It's just a big number. Arithmetic, using infinity, at times it might seem like an easy thing. Uh, I'll show you an example of what I mean. Infinity, if you just think about it, is a huge, huge, huge number. Uh, larger than any real number that you know. Uh, if you think about it, just think super huge number. And you can do some sort of arithmetic with it. What's a super huge number and I add 1 to it, what do you suppose I would get? Well, you might answer, uh, you probably get a super huge number again. And in fact, you do. Infinity plus one, you could think about it as a huge number, and if we agree that a super, super huge number is infinity, well, that would be the case. And and it gets even more interesting than that. Infinity plus 17, well, what would that be? Well, it would be infinity as well. Infinity minus 153. Well, you haven't really taken that much away from a super, super huge number. It can absorb that and still be super, super huge. So at first, arithmetic seems easy. Even multiplication, infinity times 2, well, that's infinity. Infinity times 7, well, that's infinity. Infinity times 3.1712, watch how fast I do this. Oh, it's infinity. In some sense, arithmetic is super, super easy with infinity. Uh, what's infinity to the third power? Well, that's infinity. What's the square root of infinity? That's the square root of a super, super huge number. Well, it's so huge that taking the square root doesn't even touch its hugeness and so you still have infinity. That's a sort of arithmetic that one would be led to um, believe if one believes that infinity is super super huge larger than any real number. So at first it may seem harmless but but guess what happens and you get crazy things like uh, like this uh, infinity super super huge number minus another super 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 huge number now you got trouble now you have a lot of trouble because you can't make up your mind well are these equal to zero are they the same hugeness nobody said they're the same hugeness do we even know that all infinities are created equal we we don't know that yet and at first people didn't know they thought well yeah maybe all infinities are created equal but but maybe not because some infinities Maybe if you take infinity raised to infinity, that's equal to infinity. Uh, was that the same kind of infinity as just infinity plus 3? It's not that clear. All sorts of statements that were so easy and harmless in the world of real numbers become a lot more challenging when you add this to that list of real numbers. Something as innocent as the reflexive property, I'll remind you, reflexive property in the real numbers. It says every number is equal to itself. 3 is equal to 3. 5 is equal to 5. A rose is a rose is a rose. A rose is equal to a rose. That works fine for real numbers. For infinity, not so much. It's not always the case that infinity equals infinity. Not all infinities are created equal. All sorts of trouble coming away. Why? Because people went on inventing things like uh, zero and infinity. And why were they inventing such crazy things? Well, there's some other, there were some other things going on in the world. These uh, super big and bold ideas. Uh, 
that started, you know, three thousand years ago when uh, it's famous, at least in the Western culture, the time of the Greeks were contemplating these big and bold ideas where they would take uh, circles, for example, they would take a circle and they would slice it up into infinite many little triangles, not five or six or seven or eight, but infinite many of these, so many of them that we're trying to exhaust the error, this is called the method of exhaustion, the error in approximating the area of the circle using triangles. And so you have infinite many of these little things, infinite many of them, and each each has area of approximately zero. And so if you wanted to add them all up, to add them all up, you would be doing, roughly speaking, you'd be doing something like this. You'd be doing infinite many of these guys that are roughly area um, is equal to zero. And so you get crazy, crazy things like this. What is zero times infinity? It's not that clear. Why be, look, let me just elaborate on that for just a second. Um, if I take zero times five, it kills the five and it gives you zero. If I take zero times 712, it would kill the 712 and give you zero. If I take zero times 811, it kills 811. It's as if zero is like a vampire. Whenever it bites you, you turn into it a vampire yourself. Whenever it bites five, it turns five into a vampire. Whenever it bites 712, it turns it into... It always overtakes its, uh, its host. So uh, you can think about it as zero as being a vampire. It turns everything into zero, no matter how big... Or it doesn't matter. Zero times 711,000, it'll kill it and give you zero. On the other hand, infinity does the same thing. Infinity is like a werewolf. Infinity times one, well, that would be infinity. Infinity times seven, well, that would be infinity. Infinity times 0 0.132, well, that would be infinity. This is like a werewolf showing the same sort of behavior when it bites anybody. Like any any kind of number, uh, I just wrote point pi, whoa. Uh, pi time, you know, pi divided by 311, whatever kind of number, it doesn't matter, it'll turn into infinity, plus or minus, depending if it's positive or negative real number. So on the on one hand, we have this werewolf, infinity turns everybody into infinity. On the other hand, we have this vampire, zero turns everybody into a vampire. Now what would happen if you take both of them and multiply them together? This one's trying to turn into a a vampire, this one's trying to turn into a werewolf, it's not exactly clear what's going to happen. And the truth is that not all zeros are created equal and not all infinities are created equal. And so this leads to this notion that, whoa, this kind of calculation, whenever you take this kind of numbers, you got, you got one, two, those are harmless, those are the natural numbers. Neanderthals could do that. But as humans developed in their thinking, they invented things like zero and infinity. And no longer is this any easy stuff. This is no longer a, a little a bucket of numbers for little kids. This is now a big, a big adult person's numbers, and uh, it's got dangerous things like that. So that leads us to the next idea.